Reflections. It's Tuesday, October 13th, 2020. So glad you are here again today. So glad you are learning to start your day right with God. As we continue to seek ways to to untether ourselves from from all the the things that, that tie us to this world, building this discipline, building this routine to seek God, make sure our hearts are aligned with His, make sure that we are armored up for whatever the, the world throws at us today, and make sure that we have the eyes to see all the opportunities that God is going to place before us. All are essential in that what we're working towards over the next four weeks. So glad you are starting your day right and let's get started we have uh, more volunteer opportunities this week I believe this week it's Wednesday and Friday that John has selected I did not get a chance to see the sign up sheet if you signed up on Sunday uh, make sure that you are aware which day you signed up for uh, the volunteer slots as last week will be from 10 o'clock to 1 you can always contact Dave and see if there's any more slots available. Um, but we will be hosting these regular volunteer opportunities over the next several weeks as uh, more and more things are handed off to us to finish. The team from last week did an outstanding job, so thank you for all of those who participated. Uh, just seeing uh, paint on the walls and rooms being defined is uh, uh, a great encouragement uh, to me and to uh, the rest of the team. So thank you. Uh, it moves us one step closer to, to actually transitioning to our new home. And it's felt like a great distance away, but with each coat of paint, it feels like we get just another step closer. Uh, hopefully, uh, my project was tiled this past week. I will um, be returning to that um, this coming week as well. Uh, and then hopefully we'll start putting some carpet down in the sanctuary um, uh, the following week from there. So uh, lots going on. Hope, we're hoping to have some electricians uh, join us very soon to, to hang uh, all the lighting and that'll move us yet another step closer. So stay tuned, but if you are interested in volunteering, reach out to Dave and see if there's any slots still available. As mentioned in our open, we are uh, seeking for the next several weeks how to, to achieve weightlessness as we witnessed in Paul's walk, as we desire to achieve for ourselves, um, as we, we saw the last of Paul and Timothy I believe that, that it was Paul's heart to uh, instruct Timothy and in how to, to climb to the heights that he had experienced in his ministry. And through those words that he shared with Timothy or words that he shares with us as well of God's desire for us to climb to similar if not greater heights. We began yesterday looking at the book of Psalms and we discussed just brief outline of uh, what they contain, how they're, they're divided. Uh, we're going to continue our study of Psalms that have been separated out by modern Bible uh, scholars as, as wisdom, uh, carry a similar theme of wisdom. Now you may be more familiar with wisdom as far as uh, that category. If you look to Proverbs, most of Proverbs is considered a, you know, wisdom. A father handing down what he has learned uh, to his sons. Uh, Paul handing down what he has learned to Timothy. So uh, very much fits with what we're trying to accomplish or what God's trying to accomplish through us in the coming weeks as we achieve or seek to achieve weightlessness. So uh, that's why we are uh, making our home here in Psalms uh, over the next several weeks as well. As 
So we're going to move to Psalm 14 today. It's another psalm uh, written by by David and uh, has to do with how God perceives the world and its brokenness. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, their deeds are vile, there is no one who does good. So we've spoken of it and much of the early theme of Romans is this idea that the world has moved on from God, that uh, they are blind to creation itself. We have spoke on several occasions just in the last few months of the, the creation and the world around us testifies to God and yet people seem blind uh, to to him, to his, his greatness, to his majesty. And that's what, what we're witnessing here in Psalm 14 is, is just foolish people who, who cannot recognize God who is right before them. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned away, all have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. You may be familiar with this passage. It is repeated in Romans, and it always breaks my heart. And I desperately want to cry out, Lord, I'm here. I love you. But now imagine from God's perspective, looking down from the heavens on earth. Where are my churches? Where's the light that I desire to see overcoming evil? Is there anyone who still cares? When we talk about aligning our hearts with God and aligning our, our, our hearts with God's heartbreak, this is a passage that certainly captures that well. God desperately seeking his children. And because we are inhibited, because we are unwilling perhaps to to reach and to to shine for his glory and perhaps because the the world is is so corrupt and so dark he's having a very difficult time seeing us so our job today our job as we pursue becoming weightless is to be seen. Be seen by God. I'm here, Lord. Be seen by the world. God is still alive and well. And my life testifies to his greatness. Do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on the Lord. But there they are, overwhelmed with dread. For God is present in the company of the righteous. This is a very interesting passage. It may help you when we talk about learning to love our enemies, that this passage is suggesting that God feels sorrow for those who are, are, are harming his children because they have no clue as to what evil they're bringing upon themselves.
when the Lord says vengeance is mine he's speaking of the judgment that comes upon that that judgment comes immediately or judgment comes at the end of of the age but just judgment will come and those who are persecuting and harming God's children God's church God's people are going to be held accountable for that they don't know what they're bringing upon themselves so the next time that someone is is oppressing you somebody is is a roadblock to you getting ahead. Somebody is outwardly hateful towards you. Certainly call on the Lord to, to navigate that. God desires for you to be safe, secure, and at peace. But perhaps that evening find your way to to where this passage leads which is forgive them Lord for they don't know what they're doing they don't know what they're inviting upon themselves by coming against one of your children Jesus speaks it from the cross Stephen speaks it moments before his death being stoned in the streets of Jerusalem. If they only knew what they were inviting upon themselves, would they turn and be saved? Perhaps this helps us get one step closer to that very difficult task of learning to love our enemies. You evildoers, frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion, when the Lord restores his people. Let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Now, there's some wonderful parallels between Israel being freed from oppression in Egypt and being brought into the promised land for uh, what we experience of being brought out of oppression out of the world and being invited into heaven however we have to recognize that that God's plan for the Israelites, God's plan for salvation from the very beginning is Jesus. And that had not been accomplished just by bringing them out of Egypt. That the full course, the full plan for Egypt, or for Egypt, for Israel, is the same as it is for us. And so here we find ourselves perhaps in the, the height of, of Israel's success, all 12 tribes brought together under, the, the, under King David, and yet they're already struggling. They're already uh, being pulled in multiple directions and, and tethered to to the world and so David's heart what David was witnessing is we need salvation and it really is forecasting ahead to Jesus and that when Jesus comes and salvation is poured out that the people that will be cheering the loudest will be the Israelites will be those who have sacrificed their life long ago to accomplish God's plan for you and I 
So a reference to salvation, the salvation that Jesus will bring, way back here in Psalm 14. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for, for blending in too much. For blending into this dark world, Lord, where you look down from heaven and it's hard to even find us. Here we are, Lord. We desire to shine brightly for you today. If even from the heavens you can, can look down and see your light reflected in us. That others might hear our testimony and be able to receive the gift of salvation. We're here, Lord. Lord, help us to continue to strive towards weightlessness. Do not allow us to be hindered by this world, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that no matter where we travel today, you will be present. Whatever situation we might find ourselves in, even in oppression and persecution, that you were there. As we reflect back this evening, Lord, help us to get to the place where, where we can let go of the burdens and, and the anger and the resentment of being mistreated by this world. Soften our hearts, Lord, so that we might come to a place where we can pray to feel sorry for those who who are being manipulated by this world, who are ruled by their emotions, <coughs> ruled by all of the things that you desire to free us from. Lord, we pray that they might be freed as well. Forgive them, Lord, for they do not know what they do. Open their eyes today, Lord. For they too can shine just as you and as you have helped us shine. We need you today, Lord. We can't do a thing without you. Light up this world, Lord. We're here. Send me. We pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. We got a full day ahead of us. Some beautiful weather no excuse not to get out there share God's love with the world and let him know that you care I'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock know that I love you and I miss you be good